on this channel, I've looked at many Game Gear LCD mods. There is now no shortage of options when it comes to backlighting Sega's handheld. But there is one backlight kit that has eluded me. It was developed by Norix of Japan and is unfortunately not available internationally. This makes it rather difficult to obtain if you reside outside of Japan. But luckily, I have one here to show you and see if it's worth the effort to try and get one for yourself. Let's take a look. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. Today I'm going to share with you a Game Gear backlight kit that comes from Japan. This is called the GG LCD, and it was sent to the channel by my good friend Bob of Retro RGB. He brought this mod to my attention, and the more I looked and researched this kit, the more intrigued I became. Based on the limited research I conducted on this kit, I found that there really isn't too much documentation on it. On the for sale page, the kit appears to have been developed by an individual that goes by the alias Norix. The kit appears to date back as far as 2015 for revision 2 of the mod, but today we're going to be looking at revision 3 which seems to have been released in February of this year. Now interestingly, the revision 3 board does support both IPS and TFT LCDs which is something we haven't seen before. It's usually just one or the other. The instructions clearly indicate which LCD models the driver board is compatible with. So in addition to the limited amount of information out there, the installation instructions manual is actually fully in Japanese, making it rather difficult to follow. So hopefully I can pull this mod off. Thankfully there are some very helpful pictures in the manual, and I also should be able to use Google Translate to at least get a rudimentary understanding of the instructions. Now Bob also sent me a dual ASIC model game gear for me to install the kit into. I tried searching online for information about a dual ASIC install of the GG LCD, but I actually couldn't find anything. Everything that I did find was unfortunately for the single ASIC model. But not to worry, the instructions does have a section that covers dual ASIC model game gears. In a way, this will be, at least from what I can tell, the first video on the GG LCD and the first coverage of an install on a dual ASIC model game gear. We're doing a lot of firsts today. Anywho, if you enjoy learning about mods like this, be sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel for plenty more weekly mod videos just like this one. Alright, so in this video, I'm going to start off by showing you what's included in the GG LCD kit, as well as all the other items I'll be using for this build. Then I'll demonstrate how to install everything, discuss the key features of the mod, go over the pros and cons, and of course provide you with my overall thoughts. Starting with the GG LCD kit itself, here we have the custom driver board PCB. It actually looks pretty similar to a lot of the kits we've seen to date. As you can see, this is revision 3 of the board, and it has very nicely marked solder pads. An overall nice looking package. The only other thing included in the kit is this set of 3 screws and nuts which will be used to attach the driver board to the Game Gear motherboard. And that's it. That's all you get. So in order to complete the kit, you will need to provide your own LCD. Bob got this model, which is an IPS panel. The kit also, as I said before, supports TFT screens as well. Here we have this fantastic Retro 6 shell, which is dark smoke translucent in color. I think it'll look pretty fantastic. And lastly, as I stated prior, Bob provided this dual ASIC model game gear, which thankfully works perfectly. We'll see if we need to change the capacitors in a moment once we tear it down. All right, now that we've seen all the parts I'll be using for this project, Let's start building this IPS modded Sega Game Gear. Alright, as with all mods, first thing we gotta do is open up this Game Gear. It's held together by a single 4.5mm game bit on top and 6 Phillips screws. With the shell open, disconnect the three cables holding the two halves together. Then begin removing the 6 small Phillips screws around the perimeter of the motherboard 
and the two larger ones on either side of the cart reader. Taking a closer look at the capacitors, it appears as though they have been recently replaced with high quality Nishikon caps, which is fantastic. Now gently lift the motherboard out of the front shell housing and peel off the LCD gasket. We'll be reusing this later on. For now, set aside the motherboard since we need to do some trimming to the new front shell housing. As you can see, the LCD won't sit flush against the shell. We need to trim this post, this post, and this one too. With a craft knife or chisel, trim away some of the inner post as shown. You don't want to trim too much as it could damage the post. Now do the same to this one. Be sure you are trimming the part of the post that faces the center of the shell. And then trim the top right post at a 45 degree angle as shown. Now let's reinstall the old LCD gasket. Peel the protective film on the LCD and gently position it inside the shell. In order to make sure the LCD is perfectly aligned, I placed a USB thumb drive on the bottom edge of the LCD and above this small plastic ridge. I put another on the other side, which should keep the LCD perfectly level. Then use some hot glue to tack the LCD into place. Reuse the LCD film to protect it from accidental fingerprints. Then do your best to clean up the stringy mess left behind by the hot glue. And this is what it should look like. Moving our attention to the back of the motherboard, remove the reinforcing tape securing the LCD ribbon. Then with your soldering iron, gently heat the ribbon solder pads while lifting it off. Do this carefully as you don't want to lift any of the traces. And this is what it should look like. Now we're going to begin removing some components on the motherboard, starting with the fluorescent tube. Once removed, desolder both fuses on either side. Next, we'll remove this cluster of components, which are comprised of capacitors C32, C33, inductor L2, and the transformer. And this is what it should look like. The last components we need to remove are resistors R29 and R30. Now let's start running some wire. We'll initially solder all the necessary wires to the motherboard first, then we'll make the connections to the IPS GGLCD driver board. Let's begin by soldering a small bridge wire from the pad label T10 to T11. Then solder to the pad on resistor R12, shown here. It should be right below the D-pad button contacts. Next, solder a wire to this pad labeled FB1. And then solder these wires shown here. This last wire is the most tricky one. You need to solder to this leg, which is fifth from the left. It's quite thin, so take your time. And here are all the wires ready to be soldered to the driver board. But first, let's prep the board by pre-tinning all the solder pads we'll be using. Now we need to attach the driver board to the motherboard using the included screws and nuts. Feed the screw from the front of the motherboard as shown and then thread the nut on. In order to tighten the nut, secure it with pliers while fastening the screw. And this is what it should look like. I use some heat shrink tubing to keep things nice and tidy. And now, carefully solder each wire to its corresponding pad on the driver board. These are clearly indicated in the instructions, which I'll link in the video description below. Now, this ground wire wasn't clearly explained in the instructions, but you need to solder it to this leg of capacitor C6. And lastly, solder the positive 5 volt 
and ground wire to the legs of capacitor C31 shown here. Make sure you don't mix up the polarity. Now before we start putting things together, let's give the buttons and membranes a quick cleaning with some isopropyl alcohol. Great. Now install the speaker into the front shell. Lift the bail on the LCD connector and insert the IPS ribbon cable. Once fully seated, lock the bail. And now drop in your buttons and membranes. Once everything is in, we can move the motherboard into place inside the front shell and then secure it with the eight Phillips screws. Now, I almost forgot, we need to bridge these two pads since we are using a two ASIC Game Gear. Otherwise, the screen won't work properly. Great, now we just need to transfer the power and audio boards into the new shell. Once those are in, we can now reconnect the audio and power cables and then button up the console. One nice thing about this kit is we are able to use the original game bit. All the other backlight kits actually remove the boss for this screw. Now drop in some batteries, install the glass screen lens, pop in your game of choice, and you're done. Recently, we've seen a lot of Game Gear backlight kits come to market. They all have their pros and cons, but for the most part, they offer very similar features. While the GG LCD is a decent kit which provides excellent image quality, I'm not sure I would choose it over some of the more readily available options. But before we get into that, let me give you a quick rundown of all the features. Well, for those of you who are paying close attention to the installation segment of the video, you may have noticed that I did not make any solder connections that would allow for button inputs to the GG LCD driver board. So that being the case, we actually have no video modes like we've seen on all the other kits I reviewed on this channel. What you see is what you get. There is no ability to control how the image is scaled, nor can you adjust the brightness. So as far as features are concerned, I think this kit is a bit lacking. And this brings me right into the pros and cons. Starting with the pros, I will say the image quality is quite good. It almost seems as though the image is integer scaled as I don't really notice any shimmering when playing scrolling games like Sonic. This would also explain why the image extends beyond the edges of the viewable window. But other than that, there really isn't anything I found to be compelling about this kit which unfortunately brings me to the cons. Now, when looking at these types of mods, I always try to see the positive. Unfortunately for this kit, it's mostly negative. One of the biggest cons is actually trying to buy one. As far as I know, the website kadenken.com is the only place to purchase this kit and they unfortunately do not ship internationally. You'll need to utilize a proxy service such as Sendico or have someone living in Japan purchase it for you and then ship it to you. Also, with several readily available options on the market, a sort of standard has been established when it comes to these Game Gear backlight kits. With all the kits available, we've come to expect different video modes to fit different needs. The McWill, Retro Kai, Retro 6, and Benven kits all have similar video modes which give the users multiple viewing and scaling options. Unfortunately for the GG LCD, this isn't the case. There are no alternative video options. Now, when looking at the image, you can see that it extends beyond the Game Gear's original viewing window. With other kits, there is a video option to have the image fit within the unmodified viewing window, albeit with some scaling issues. Unfortunately, the GG LCD only has one option for the size of its image, which is larger than the Game Gear's viewing window. In order to remedy this, you need to enlarge it. Now, this can lead to some issues, which is why I chose not to enlarge the window. For example, you'll need to be able to make precise cuts to the shell, otherwise you may be left with an unsightly or uneven edge to the viewing window. It will be extremely difficult to make cuts to the shell and keep it looking aesthetically nice. Another con is that there is no aligning bracket that comes with the GG LCD kit. All other kits, with the exception of the McWill, have an aligning bracket which helps keep the LCD nice and centered. 
With the GG LCD, you need to resort to methods such as hot glue or tape in order to affix the screen to the shell. You run a high chance of misalignment of the screen in that process. To tie into that, you also need to modify the shell by trimming the screw posts around the LCD. This again could cause alignment issues and you could accidentally damage those posts. In summary, the lack of scaling modes and poor implementation of installing the LCD make this kit a tough sell in my opinion. Lastly, the kit costs about 9,700 yen, which is the equivalent to 88 US dollars as of the making of this video. Remember, this doesn't include the cost of the LCD, nor does it include shipping, which will be more expensive than usual because you'll need to utilize a proxy service in order to get one. So with many other readily available options on the market that offer a better installation experience, as well as more features such as multiple scaling modes and brightness control, I'd have to say that the GG LCD has some stiff competition. And in this case, I'm not sure if the pros outweigh the cons. So there you have it. The GG LCD from Norix, an interesting bare bones backlight mod for the Sega Game Gear. As always, I'm curious about what you all think. Will any of you be getting one of these kits for your Game Gear console? Definitely let me know by leaving a comment down below. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Macho Nacho Productions. I release content every Thursday, so be sure to turn on notifications. And as always, see you next time.